Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Uh, we continue our topic on manufacturing operations. Okay, uh, so we have looked at the uh, cost associated with a manufacturing company. So whether they are manufacturing company, merchandising or service, um, when they produce the financial reports, the first financial report will be the income statement. So, how would be the income statement of uh, manufacturing differ from the other types of business? So, uh, when comparing um, the info income statement between um, manufacturing operation and merchandising operation, um, they differ in the section of uh, cost of goods sold but only under the periodic inventory system okay so if we try to recall the um, the perpetual inventories in the perpetual inventory system uh, cost of goods sold is an account which is updated every time a sales transaction happens so um, so there's no section on cost of goods sold in the income statement but there's a, a line an account line of cost of goods sold uh, but in the income statement of uh, merchandising companies that use periodic inventory system will have a section on cost of goods sold where, where it will show the, uh, the beginning inventory, it shows the purchases of the inventory and it, it uh, minuses, uh, it reduces by the, uh, the ending inventory and that comes up to the cost of goods sold. So in that kind of uh, info, um, company, company that uses periodic inventory system, then the information is different between manufacturer and merchandiser. Okay, so in the manufacturer because they don't purchase um, inventory, uh, they don't purchase um, finished goods item, but instead they manufacture the items. So that is where uh, things differ. Okay. Okay, let's see um, how do they differ. So in cost of goods sold, for a merchandiser, how do they calculate cost of goods sold? They calculate by, uh, of course, this again, this is the periodic inventory system. Okay, in the periodic in inventory system, to calculate cost of goods sold for a merchandiser is that they have to have a beginning inventory. Okay, the, uh, the beginning inventory uh, stock level that they have in the, at the beginning of the period they add the cost of goods purchased okay so they add purchases and cost or cost of goods purchased and they minus any of the ending inventory then that comes up to the cost of goods sold but for a manufacturer because they do not purchase uh, goods instead they manufacture the goods therefore they have they actually have the beginning finished goods inventory so they have the beginning goods uh, finished goods which they have not sold Add that with the cost of goods manufactured, so they will have the cost of goods manufactured, which we know, we, we understand from the previous uh, video, um, uh, the co cost of manufacturing. And then uh, we minus all the finished goods inventory that were not sold, so that it will be the cost of uh, all of the goods sold. So the beginning inventory, uh, finished goods inventory, plus the manufacturing cost, um, the the good cost of goods manufactured minus all the remaining um, finished goods inventory, then they will have they will be able to calculate the cost of goods sold, which will be deducted from the revenue uh, from the sales uh, to obtain the gross uh, profit. Okay, so we see here um, this is an um, income statement uh, draft or a partial. Uh, a part of the income statement uh, it shows the cost of goods sold section of merchandising and manufacturing income statement so this is uh, the the left side is the manufacturing uh, merchandising company and the right side is the manu manufacturing company so uh, there's a section of cost of goods sold on both uh, income statements okay so in the income statement of the merchandising company under cost of goods sold they will have the beginning inventory inventory at january 1 they have a beginning inventory they will add cost of goods purchased okay all of the good cost of goods purchased also the purchasing and probably the um uh, freight in okay um so it's uh, 650000 and then they minus the uh, cost of goods available 
uh, we, we um, they will add them together and which becomes 700,000, 20,000 of cost of goods available for sale and then they will minus the ending inventory so when they minus they will be left with those the, the cost of those items that have been sold okay so which is the cost of goods sold is 320,000 so they, that 400,000 will be the remaining inventory not sold okay um, for the manufacturing company the cost of goods sold will show these items firstly is the finished goods inventory so it's similar to inventory here but inventory here meaning those inventory that was purchased but here is the the goods uh, the inventory of those uh, items that they manufacture not the pictures but they manufactured previously in the in the previous accounting period it's a beginning finished goods inventory okay they plus the cost of goods manufactured because they don't buy they don't purchase finished goods but they manufacture into finished goods so they would have the cost of goods manufactured plus that together we have the cost of goods available for sale so when they plus the beginning uh, finished goods plus the cost of manufacturing all of the goods they will have the cost of goods available for sale so they can sell that much but how much do they actually sell will be they will have to minus the uh, finished goods inventory okay minus the finished goods inventory they will have the cost of goods sold okay um, because again like I said this is uh, for the um, periodic inventory system but if the company uses the perpetual inventory system then cost of goods sold will be calculated at, uh, at each transaction so they wouldn't have they will not have that this section inside the income statement because they already already have a cost of goods sold final figure okay okay so uh, how do we calculate cost of goods manufactured? Like, uh, if we we'll go back to this slide, of course, we need to calculate this section, cost of goods manufactured. So, how do we calculate cost of goods manufactured? Okay. They will have, firstly, they will have the total manufacturing cost of that period. So, for that particular year or that particular period that they want to report, um, they would incur direct material cost they will incur direct labor costs they will incur manufacturing overhead and they add all of those three together of the current period that will become the total manufacturing cost for the year okay but uh, that's not all they need us to also calculate the total work in progress okay so total work in progress uh, they need to add um, they need to uh, they need to add the beginning work in process inventory because some of the inventory were halfly done okay uh, some of the uh, some of the items have gone through have gone through the manufacturing process but have not finished the production process so it's partially complete so these need to be added to the manufacturing cost so when they continue the process of manufacturing they would continue working on those inventory that have partially done okay um, so that will be the beginning work in process so they add the total manufacturing cost that will become the total cost of work in process okay but then at the end of the period they have the remaining uh, work in process those items that still have not finished okay that is still under under not under construction but under under production okay so when they minus uh, those things that have uh, that have not finished then they will get those items that have finished okay so this will be the cost of goods uh, that have been completely that 100% uh, 100% completely manufactured so this is called cost of goods manufactured that's how you call, you calculate the cost of uh, goods manufactured. So you have your total manufacturing cost for the period. You have the beginning balance of items that have not completely done. Okay, you add them together, but then you minus those items that at the end of the period have not completely done. Then you have the cost of goods manufactured for the period. Okay. So, uh, in terms of um, schedule to calculate all those things, okay, uh, this is a schedule and this will be used by the management to calculate the cost of goods manufactured. Okay, 
so they will have the um, work in process okay um, so they will have the work in process they will add after the work in process they will add the um, the total manufacturing cost okay so there this is this is one part okay the one part the first part is the work in process uh beginning work in process or the uh beginning inventory or work in process and then or the second part will be the uh total manufacturing cost this is the second part the manufacturing cost that they incur throughout the year okay through, throughout the period uh when you add one and two together you will get the total total cost uh, of work in process but then at the end of the period you also have um, inventory of those items that have not been completed which is here which is this one so this is number three so you add one and two you will get a uh, total cost of work in process and then you minus number three you minus the work in process at the end of the period because there are things that have not been completely done so you need to minus that one so you are left with number four you are left with this one this is the cost of goods actually manufactured cost of goods uh, completed uh, at the end of the period so this this figure will be used to um, this will figure will be used to calculate um, the cost of goods sold in the income statement okay so um, when we uh, dive a little bit further the total manufacturing cost like i said before total manufacturing cost consists of three things there's the direct material that's the first one and then there's the direct labor and thirdly there's the manufacturing overhead so there are three the manufacturing cost is uh, is divided into three the direct materials the direct labor and the manufacturing overhead okay direct material direct labor and manufacturing overhead so when you uh, so there's uh, direct labor material here direct labor there and manufacturing overhead there so there's three of them but then when you go into the direct material the direct material themselves to calculate the direct materials used we need to look at the firstly is the beginning inventory of direct materials because when the company purchases direct material uh, uh, the, the raw materials when the company purchases raw materials not all of the raw materials will be used at that particular period probably there are some left um, not used so the beginning balance of those raw materials need to be added to the uh, um, direct materials use so they have a beginning balance of raw material and then they purchase new material this is the, they purchase new material but after purchasing new material at the end of the at the end of the period they find that there's some uh, materials not used at the end okay beginning balance of raw materials plus new materials bought but minus the materials not used at the end so finally they get the actual direct materials used which is this figure okay this is the direct materials used only this will be counted to to calculate the total cost of manufacturing co uh, cost and then direct labor is uh, 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 much straightforward so you have a direct labor cost so direct labor is whatever uh, when you pay salary for the for the direct labor or when salary is incurred on the direct labor so that will be part of the period uh, cost of the period okay and then you have the manufacturing overhead so there are several types of manufacturing overhead several examples here there's the indirect labor there's the factory repairs utilities depreciation and insurance these are some of the examples of manufacturing overhead so you total all of these sample of manufacturing overhead you will get the total manufacturing overhead which is uh, 54,800 so you add these three together you add the direct materials used plus the direct labor plus the total manufacturing overhead you will come up with the total manufacturing cost this is the the, the all from from here all of these will be become the total manufacturing cost okay so 
again work in process you add the total manufacturing cost uh, you will get the total cost of work in process and then you minus the ending work in process those work in process that have not finished you get the total uh, cost of goods manufactured so this one will be transferred into the income statement